there is no fear Cause I believe There is no doubt Cause I have seen Your faithfulness My fortune Over and over I have a home Found in your name I have a stream Found in your grace Your faithfulness My fortress over and over Make way through the water Walk me through the fire To what you are famous for What you are famous for Shut the mouths of lions Bring troubles to life To what you are famous for What you are famous for I believe in God, I believe in you. Release your love inside of me. Unleash your power for all to see. Spirit, come and fall.
Tipton, the entire district board of this wonderful district, Brother Daryl Bates, youth president, for having us, Bishop Jerry Dillon and Pastor Jason Dillon, we give you high honor, what a beautiful facility, we give honor to my beautiful wife, Janae, and our four kids drove up today, and, and all the great preachers that are here, my friends, we give you high honor. I want to mess the devil's plans up tonight. Yes. I want there to be a move of God that 30 years from now you still look back on tonight and say, what in the world? That night, if you have your Bibles, the book of Exodus chapter 7, so many friends here tonight, looking forward to tomorrow, Brother Nelson Rivera and Joel Johns, my friends, and you can see my friend Brother Drew Galloway here tonight, Brother Nate Rio, several friends. It's an honor to be before you. Let's, let's do this in Jesus' name, huh? Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 through 13. The Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, show a miracle for you. And thou shalt say unto Aaron, take thy rod, cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. He hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And I want to preach to you tonight from the subject, the intoxication of entertainment. The intoxication of entertainment. Lord Jesus, I take authority over any spirit that would even dare come in here tonight. I pray in the name of the Lord that you would do stuff only you can do. We are surrendered to the will of God. We completely submit ourselves to your plan. Heal the sick, deliver the captive, fill those with the Holy Ghost that need it. Let there be a breakthrough that we never forget. And I pray tonight that hell regrets the day that they attack this nation and attack this district and attack these kids. Let there be a breakthrough tonight in Jesus' name. One more time and let them hear you. Let them hear you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. 
I believe if you're ever going to do anything for God, if you're ever going to accomplish any great feat for God, you will have to slay your personal giant before you do. I believe you'll have to take out your Goliath, David, if you're going to be king. You'll have to face the lion's den, Daniel, if you're really truly going to see the great things in the future. If you're going to have some kind of story told about you, Shadrach, you will have to face the fire with your friends and nobody else standing with you. If you're going to do something great, you've got to face the thing that you struggle with that nobody knows about, and you have to get victory sooner or later. We go to the altar for everything except the thing we should be in the altar for. Moses, if you're going to do something great for God, you're going to have to face the guy that chased you out, and you're going to have to go before him and say, let my people go. And when I think of Pharaoh, when I think of this tyrant that ruled Israel, their people for 430 years, and the kings that ruled them. I think of cruelty. I think of taskmasters. I think of slavery, obviously, and babies dying for no reason at all. But apparently God saw something different about Pharaoh. And he said, Moses, when you talk to Pharaoh, the first thing he's going to say is entertain me. Show a miracle. Preacher, move me with your encounter with God. Tell me how great God is. I don't want to experience it myself. I just like to respond to the stories you tell from your own encounters. I have no intention of changing or being delivered or getting out of this mess I'm in, but move me with your power. Stir me with your preaching. Stir me with your anointing. But the problem with the spirit of entertainment is this. After the man of God is done performing, entertainment is never satisfied. So after I'm done watching church, I go watch something else. Pharaoh said, that was impressive, Moses. Now let me get my other entertainment out. And it's dangerous when you're entertained in here like you're entertained out there. You know what the worst thing about COVID was to me? The worst thing was we had churches that used to be excited for revival that were now more excited about views online than baptisms. We're more excited over a virtual harvest that's not even real than someone getting in the water and getting their... I'm still apostolic, and I still believe that you need to get the Holy Ghost, and you need to be baptized, and you need to be delivered. I am worried that some of our upcoming great preachers are more concerned with the latest statements and cliches that make the crowd go ooh ah but they can't cast out a devil and they can't cure cancer and they can't pray someone through we need some apostolic young preachers to wake up and say i'm ready to do what the world needs somebody get loud and let god hear you be apostolic show me a miracle and when you're done let the world show me some magic I like what's miraculous and I like what's magical just want to watch stuff watch sports and watch games and watch movies and watch my phone and watch the preacher watch the singers 
just entertain me. The problem with that is you unleash a snake fight in the spirit world when you get that mentality. And your breakthrough that you get at church now wars with your breakdown that you have when nobody's around. Yeah, we're not going to shout about that right there. We're just going to sit there. Pull the, pull the toes back. And the anointing you feel on Friday night battles the addiction you deal with late Friday night. You need to get delivered all the way, baby, to where that thing that's holding you never leaves with you again. You ought to have the greatest altar call you've ever had tonight personally because the snake is going to die. Now I got this war going on. I feel one way at church. I feel one way when I'm surrounded by a thousand young people on fire for God. But then when no one's around, I'm vexed. I feel victory and then vexation. That's what Janus' name, Janus was one of the magicians. His name means to vex. So he feels victory and vexation. You go back and forth. Like what I feel in here and then I'm why can't I get victory over this? Because you're letting it entertain you. Oh. It's like trying to, it's like trying to have, you're trying to live in two flows at the same time. It's like in Acts 27 when they took the ship into a place where two seas met or two different currents and they crashed because you cannot flow in two separate flows and expect to survive. Sooner or later. Sooner or later, what you're struggling with and what you're seeking need to duke it out on a Friday night, and you need to determine what's going to win the future of your death. You need to determine, is God going to use you mightily, or are you going down? Somebody clap your hands and stir the atmosphere. Hmm. Like, just letting, letting things in and trying to survive. And Jesus said, Jesus said in Luke eleven thirty four 34 that the light of the body is the eye. And if your eye is single, your whole body's full of light. But if your eye is evil, your whole body's full of darkness. You know what that means? Hell just wants to get your eyes. That's all they care about. Well, I would never do what I'm watching. Hell don't care. If they get your eyes, you're under arrest. Where are the shouters now? Don't just give God your hands. Give him your eyes. Give him your ears. Give him your heart. Give him your mind. Give him your future. Uh, just two, two separate flows. Oh, oh preacher, you don't understand. If, if, I, if I turn the show off, I won't know who dies. I know you're dead. Why? Why are you emotional over a fake movie? But you read about Calvary and you don't drop one tear. Why in the world Are you crying over somebody who dies in a show, but you don't cry about the fact that he died on a cross for our sin? Does anybody love Jesus more than anything? In so emotional with things of the world. Oh. 
Pharaoh said, that's pretty impressive. And the rod of Moses and Aaron ate the snakes. And then it came back into a rod. I bet Moses and Aaron didn't put the rod by the bedpost that night. You know what I'm saying? Good night. Cobra. That, that stick is going to stay outside. In fact, we're going to put it in the ark. That's the real reason they did that. Thing turns into a cobra. <laughs> oh, Pharaoh said, that's, that's impressive. But I'm still not going to change. But God said, okay, let's go around too. Meet him at the water. Okay. Turn the water into blood, Mo. Okay. Pharaoh says, hmm, that's impressive. Transformation right in front of his eyes. Be careful when other people get transformed and you don't, and you talk about their miracles all the time. Very dangerous when you talk about how great church was and all these other people got touched from God, and then what happened to you? Oh, I just watched it. There was transformation. It didn't happen to me. I just watched the water turn, water turn into blood. And Pharaoh said, wow, it's impressive. Magicians entertain me. The magicians turn the water into blood. And the New Living Translation, Pastor Dylan says that Pharaoh went into his house and put all of this out of his mind. Just another show. Just another great service followed by a great struggle. Just another great move of God followed by a great magical moment with the world. Vexed. Trying to put church out of my mind and the world out of my mind. And just trying to get away from all of it. Don't know what's going on. There's a battle for my destiny. And I, I feel one way here and then then this quickly gets my attention, so I'm just going to put all of it out of my mind. you got to love God, though. He's, he's still chasing Pharaoh, so he says, Okay, Moses, uh, loose the frogs. Now, God's got a strange sense of humor sometimes, and if you went home tonight and there was five million frogs in your if you went to the Hilton Garden Inn and you opened your door to your room or whatever hotel you're in and there was 100,000 frogs in your room, I bet you'd say, okay, God, what am I doing wrong? And apparently, Bishop Tipton, apparently the, the frogs got to Pharaoh. The water didn't really get to him, neither did the snakes, but the frogs, the Bible said, got in the palace. They got into the king's, where the king's chambers were. So apparently now... There's a move of God that's going home with you. See, the other moves of God didn't stir me because I could just go home and get, get away from it. Just, But there are moves of God that will follow you. <laughs> there are moves of God that will get in your bedroom. <laughs> there are moves of God that will get on your family. I don't want a move of God that I forget about what I shouted about three days later. I want a move of God that lingers in my house, lingers in my car, lingers in my mind. The frogs are now in the house plague season has started i could push it away people other other people are suffering i'm fine but when it gets in my house now it's like oh this is uncomfortable i want a move of god that makes me uncomfortable i am so sick of cute church i want a move of god that leaves me going what in the world I want a move of God that I leave and my brain is different and my... <laughs> the frogs are... The frogs are everywhere. The frogs are everywhere and most... you got to get in here and get rid of these frogs. Notice he didn't ask the magicians to get rid of them. 
he's starting to pick up on the fact that my entertainment may not be doing what my preacher is. <laughs> Moses, come in here and get rid of these frogs. And every preacher worth his salt knows the next part. And when Moses said, when do you want them to go? He said, tomorrow. Is anyone disturbed by Pharaoh? <laughs> like, why not right now? Here's a signal you're getting drunk on entertainment. Okay? When you want the miracle tomorrow, when you want to start a prayer life next week, when you want to pay your tithes after the next check, I'm going to say something to you. I want you to put this statement in your brain. Entertainment does not kill your desire to consecrate. It doesn't kill your desire to have a prayer life and fast and be spiritual. It does not kill the desire to do it. It kills the discipline to follow through. Well, I just want to get up tomorrow morning and pray at 5 a.m. You can't watch movies till 3 a.m. and wonder why you're not praying at 5. You can't be drunk on the world and expect angels at your bedside when you wake up. You've got to say, sorry, I'm disconnecting from that to connect to this. Intoxication starts with excitement and euphoria, but then it leads into confusion and stupor. And before long, you get uh, unconscious, and the final state of intoxication is death. After comatose, you, would, you die, and you drift into it slowly. And he said, I want, I want to get rid of them. I'm just in awe. These frogs, do it tomorrow. I know I need a move of God. I just want it tomorrow. I know I've got to get right. How many times you witness to somebody? And it's not like, I don't want to come to church. It's like, I know I need to be there. I know I need to come. I, God's been telling me they're drunk on entertainment. It's Pharaoh. I know I need it, just not ready yet. And so God said, okay, Moses, unleash the lice. God will get your attention. Another word for lice in the Hebrew is ticks. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> your bed at the Hilton? I hope, Lord God, tonight it's not like this because I'm staying there too. And you pull the sheet back and it's like, oh, there's a tick farm. And Bishop Dillon, the Bible said the magicians, they tried to do it too. They couldn't. They tried to make the lice appear. They tried to, and they couldn't do it. Because there comes a moment if you stay around this long enough, that the world starts admitting. If you pray hard enough, your addiction will start saying, I can't compete with that. If you break through long enough, that demon will say, man, I can't. If you get on fire enough, sooner or later, hell says, we can't stop that. Never stop praying. Never stop fasting. Never stop searching. You're letting hell know, I'm not done. I'm going to fight until you give in. It's like we were, we were driving through Indiana going to preach one weekend. We had driven like 14 hours, me and my wife and the kids, and their traffic stopped. And there was this fire truck on the side of the road and all these firefighters putting out this fire. And we finally got through that. About a mile down the road, another fire. More fire trucks, more firemen putting it out. Another mile down the road, another fire. I was like, what is going on? And then after we passed the three fires, we went 
We, clear, we went through all the traffic, got down the road. About two miles down the road, it was another wildfire. No fire trucks. And God said, if you start enough fires, hell will run out of resources to put them all out. I'm not just trying one thing. I'm going all in with everything I can do. But sooner or later, I want to pin that demon down and say, I'm going to get victory over you somehow. Uh, they couldn't do it in fact they said this is nothing other than the finger of God <laughs> they're saying God has more power in one finger than all the sorcery we can do to stop you from getting your deliverance God has more power in one finger than every social media platform you can find to scroll hours on. God can do for more in one service. They said, uh, we can't even compete with that. And they, they left the room. <laughs> oh, and... And Pharaoh no longer even calls them back, Pastor Dylan. He didn't even try to bring them to comp He didn't even try to get them to compete with Moses anymore because he's starting to realize this Moses is a freak. He just keeps bringing it. And my entertainment can't compete with it. Because hell cannot create. They can only react. If you're reacting to everything, you're playing hell's way, hell's game. You have creative anointing, creative power. You have prophetic words that are in your spirit that you can release in the atmosphere and change situations. But if you're always reacting to what other people say, you're being controlled by something you can't even see. Reactive anointing, tell. They said, oh, well, we can't do it. And I thought they disappeared from the Bible, but apparently God wasn't through with them because you don't mock God. Because there was a plague that came out a few days later called the plague of boils. And the Bible said that the, the boils went out and the magicians got boils. And I thought to myself, well, why is that even in there? And the, so I started studying it and my jaw dropped because... I knew Moses went to the burning bush and threw the rod down and became a snake because he was going to go before Pharaoh and have the snake fight challenge. I knew that. But something else happened at the burning bush that seeming doesn't make any sense. He, God said, put your hand inside your, your bosom, your coat there, and Bishop, and pull it out. And it came out leprosy. And then put it back in and it came out whole. Remember that? It's almost like it just disappears from the Bible until you read what boils are in the Hebrew. Leprosy. You'll never not use everything you get in a prayer meeting. It'll show up sooner or later. <laughs> and the magicians could not stand in the palace anymore because they had boils on them. I don't want a move of God that just gives you victory over the entertainment. I want to drive the entertainment out of your atmosphere so it can't even come near you. I want the magicians to get boils. What is, I want hell to regret the day they ever brought the addiction to you. I want them to regret the day they mess with your family, they mess with your brother, they mess with your sister. I want them to regret the day Moses, Pharaoh said, entreat the Lord for me, which one of the Hebrew meanings is intercede for me. You cannot be entertained and intercede at the same time. You can't be an intercessor if you've got to be entertained. Average altar call in America before COVID lasted seven minutes because we don't know how to pray if there's no music. 
I might deal with intercession tomorrow. Let's see. We'll see. And, and all these plagues come. And Pharaoh is so, in, he's so drunk. He's watching it all. And he sees all the plagues. But the last one, he can't even see it. He's so drunk watching the show that he can't see a death angel walking right by him, headed toward his boy. It's just a show. Just, just wild church, just wild moves of God. And, and there's an angel passing you. And the angel walks in the room and kills Pharaoh's kid. Walks out. And you would think bishop that pharaoh would get on his knees and say moses please forgive me you have all this power raise my kid from the dead do whatever get out of here but just raise my kid please save my kid you know what his last words were bless me how do you pray for blessings when your family's dying you're drunk on entertainment when you want to more stuff and a nicer outfit to impress everyone, but you haven't won anybody at your school. <laughs> oh, I feel like preaching. You're drunk on the world when you're more concerned with who's watching you tonight. I just want more stuff. I just want more stuff. Bless me also. You're praying for blessings when your kid is dead? You're drunk. You're praying for a stage and bypassing the altar. Stop dreaming to be at Youth Congress on the platform so everyone can see you when you've got someone right down the street that is your youth congress that's saying can you please tell me about uh. head to the red sea moses opens up the red sea pharaoh says i'm gonna go chase that move of god sad bishop because he he started the encounter saying show me a miracle and he ends his life watching miracles wash over him he drowns in a miracle he drowns watching the people leave and get delivered how many people are going to miss the rapture staring at their phone time to be cute stop worrying about what she thinks about you or what he thinks about you the altar call is yours tonight and you're gonna have to do something different besides sit there and act cool you're gonna have to go die and say God change you know the difference between Pharaoh and Moses Pharaoh said show me the miracles Moses said, show me your glory. Pharaoh said, I'm here for the show. Moses said, I am the show. I've come to give God everything that I have and spend my life stretching out for him. What are you chasing? What do you want? What are you watching? What's distracting you? Why aren't you praying? Why aren't you hungry? I want to say this. Let's all stand. David got the presence of God, Pastor Dylan, on the ark. 
Comes back every six paces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sets it down, sacrifices, and dances before God and shouts. And everybody was joining the party. Everybody was engaged except for one person. And she was being entertained by it. And when you are a spectator, you become a scoffer pretty quick. And, and his wife was the only one not worshiping. And he was giving God everything, and everybody else was too. And she mocked him and said, you're trying to show off. You're being this and being that. And we all know what happened, how she became barren. But what we don't ever preach was that a, a little while later, she had already had seven boys. The enemy came and said, we want to kill those seven boys for what Saul did to our people. And David let it happen. So here's what I want to tell you. That if Pharaoh and Michael, David's wife, could come into this youth rally and preach something to you, they would say to you that the cost of being intoxicated with entertainment manifests in the kids. Listen to me, Dad, who's out there. Just because you handle your struggle doesn't mean it's right for the junior to have to fight Daddy's demons. Mom, I'm going to turn this in a second. Mom, it's because you are okay and you can handle the world and the Lord, you think anyway. That does not mean it's right for your baby girl to have to fight your monster that you let in the house. But young person, hear me. I don't care who let what spirit in your house. You have the power to drive it out tonight. You don't have to be what your dad was, what your mom was. I release authority in this house right now, and I release prayer and sacrifice and fasting to come upon you so you'll never be the same. You want real apostolic revival? Put something on the altar that you don't want to. Lay down what entertains you and watch God sweep in and use you like you've never been used and you never thought God could use you. When your pastor preaches Sunday, you're not, you're not in the critical section watching everything. You're engaged with it. You're going after it. You're hungry for it because you know it's not entertaining me. It's delivering me. We're not anointed to entertain you, but we can cast the devil out of you and we can pray the cancer out of you. But you have to want it more than you want the addiction. You can check your favorite sports team 15 times a day, but you can't read five minutes in the Word. I just don't have time to read my Bible. Your, your screen time says otherwise. I know we're not shouting, but I'm after something. I'm after a move of God that we don't forget. I'm after a move of God that we do not forget. I'm after a move of God that old addictions and long struggles die at the altar and never leave with you ever again because something's different about you when you leave this place. Who needs a miracle? Maybe in your mind, maybe in your eyes. I put that to one young man, he went blind on the phone when I called it out. And then the Lord restored his sight and seconds later, 
God has power to do anything. But you ought to give him everything tonight. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late in the game to be halfway in, halfway out. Antichrist is coming and Jesus Christ is coming and you need to be ready with everything in you. You need to make sure that I'm never going back the way I Somebody ought to bust a move out of your pew and get in the altar and say, Jesus, don't let me be lost and don't let me miss out on what you're trying to do. Your drug addiction, can, uh, way too many people still staring. Whoa. Whoa. Fear, get out of here right now. Fear, get out of here right now. Yeah. There should be a whole lot more people coming toward the altar. And the ones that aren't moving are the ones I'm preaching to right now. I didn't come to entertain you, but you're acting like this is a theater. It's not a theater. It's an altar call. Do you remember? It's an altar call, and we're apostolic. Do you remember who you are? Do you remember what he's done for you? Do you remember where he's brought you from? Do you remember what he did for your family? And do you remember where he's taking you? No music tonight, everybody join the altar call. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. We need a move of God that we've never seen. We need a move of God that we've never seen. Somebody get real with Jesus. Somebody get real with Jesus. Somebody get real with Jesus. You may not be able to come all the way to the front, but take a step or two in your pew. Do something to show God I'm moving toward you. Come on, somebody. Come on, pray like nobody's in the room. Pray like nobody's listening but Jesus because no one's listening but Jesus. Pray like nobody can hear you but the Lord because no one can hear you but the Lord. Pray, pray in the spirit. Pray until you're free. Pray until you're free. Pray until it's on the altar. Pray until it's on the altar. Pray until it's dead. Let my people go. Let the youth of Mississippi go. He ought to shut up. Come on. Ignore everybody around you. Lay hands on your own head if you need to. But get that breakthrough that you need. Get that breakthrough that you need. Nobody's trying to embarrass you. Get the breakthrough that you need. Come on, give it to God. Give it to God right now. In the back, give it to Jesus. In the aisle, give it to Jesus. In the middle of the pew, give it to Jesus right now. Don't waste the altar call. Waiting for your magicians to show up. Don't waste the miracle waiting on some magic. Don't waste the miracle while you wait on the magic.
Come on, drive it out. Give the magicians boils, God. Give the spirits torment that came against these kids. Torment the spirits that have been tormenting these young men and these young ladies. Torment the demons before their time. Torment the demons before their time. Come on. You're not a homosexual. You're a man of God. You're a woman of God. You're a child of God. Come on. Put that in Shatala Bahaya. Get it on the altar. Get it on the altar. Sika Shakata. Put it on the altar. A move of God that you never forget. An altar call that you never walk away from the same. Come on, pray a prayer that you're afraid to pray. Pray a prayer your flesh doesn't want you to pray. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost on that right there. Pray the prayer your flesh doesn't want you to pray. Pray about the thing you don't want to pray about. Bring up the thing you don't want to bring up. Pray the thing you need to pray. Pray the prayer you need to pray. Come on, let it die on the altar. Get real with Jesus. Be specific with Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Nobody else. Talk to Jesus. He's going to help you. He's not going to attack you. He will put strength in you. There's a real cry breaking forth. There's a real cry breaking forth. There's a real prayer going up right now. It's all over the walls. It's in the aisles. It's in the pew. It's soaking the altar. It's on the platform. There's a snake fight in here. There's a snake fight in here. This is the service that's going to set up great demonstration in your district. There will be great miracle signs and wonders this year in this district. There will be great outpourings of the Holy Ghost in this district because there are snakes dying on the altar at the beginning of it. There will be great demonstration. There will be great demonstration. There will be great demonstration. Cancer cells die in this room right now in the name of Jesus Christ.
There's some real hunger in here right now. There's some real hunger in here. Somebody's burying an addiction. Somebody's putting it down in the water, in the spirit, in the blood, in the name. Somebody's putting something down right now. Somebody's winning the victory. Somebody's pinning the devil down. Somebody's saying, I'm not leaving here the way I came. I insist on the miracle. I proclaim my deliverance. I declare my destiny. I speak my miracle. Come on, you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're not a failure. You're not a victim. You're a child of God. You're a warrior. You've got a great future. Get a hold of God. And it's all over the building. Almost everybody's praying right now. Almost everybody's in the spirit. Almost everybody's not watching. They're getting a hold of God, Brother Nelson. They're getting a hold of God right now. That's what a move of God needs to be right there. I'm not being entertained by it. I'm engaging it. I'm engaging it. I'm engaging it. Yo, Salabata Shata. There's a way with the Holy Ghost coming in here right now. Would you let it get on you? Would you pray in the Holy Ghost right now? If you've got it, would you pray in the Spirit? Would you pray in tongues? Would you let it wash over you right now? Let the Spirit of God wash over you right now. Somebody get more determined than hell is. Somebody get more desperate than hell is. Mahaya. <laughs> Demonstration is coming. Demonstration is coming. Demonstration is coming. Demonstration is coming. There's not an addiction you cannot be delivered from right now. There's not a stronghold that can hold you back right now. There's not a past that can keep you from the future God has for you. There's not a breakdown that can fight this breakthrough. Come on, you're done watching church. We're not on the screen, we're in the altar. We're not here to be entertained by the preaching and then turn the, turn the phone off afterwards. You're in the house of the king. This is God's house. He's not the entertainment. Alabore Shato. 
Stir us and shake us, rattle our cages until we're never the same. Let my people go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Hila mo shana la mahaya. Hila na madakoto ya thasata. Your prayer life is about to go through the roof. You're about to have more prayer time than you realized you had. Your Bible reading time's going through the roof. Your consecration will not be just a desire, it will be a discipline. It will be a top priority. It won't be if I get around to it. It'll be the top priority of your day. It's going to be the top priority of your day. Call a preacher right now, God. Call a missionary right now, God. Intercessor, right now. start a fire that every devil in Mississippi cannot put out start a fire that every devil in this state cannot put out start a revival that will spread to every church be the revival stop waiting for it you are it you're the walking revival No doors open, be the door, be the door. Find something. God, fill him with the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus, fill him with the Holy Ghost right there. In the name of the Lord, there you go. It's starting to move. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, let it get all over you. Let it get inside. 
Let it change some plans. Let it change some habits. Let it change what you do when you're bored. Come on, start prioritizing the moments. Start planning your days. Start planning your prayer time. Start scheduling your prayer time. Don't try to get around to it. Make it happen. Make it happen. Give God a place in your house that's now your altar. Give God a time. It's your most important appointment of your day. Give God a place. Give God a time. Develop a praying spirit. Don't just get around to it. You'll be entertained out of it. Make it the top priority. Hasata. Release fasting in here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break through that. Fight your own flesh. Fight your own flesh and you'll defeat every devil within a hundred miles. Defeat your flesh, you'll defeat the enemy. Defeat you, you'll defeat the devil. Win the war internally, you'll win the war externally. Get victory in your mind. Paul said, I think myself happy. No matter what you're doing to me on the outside, I've got you pinned right here. Get victory in your mind. You can make it. You will make it. You will not quit. You will not walk away. You will not backslide at 18. You will live for God until you die or until he raptures you.